Oh, let's do a little recap of 2016. Focus mainly from the 3D printing standpoint. In order to do that, we'll have to go into my robot hut museum here. And here we are. Outside it's about 9 degrees in here. I think we're sitting at about 36. Yeah. So, when I started uh, this year off in 3D printing, I was finishing up a project from last year. The first uh, robot project I ever did that had 3D printed parts was called Jagronaut. And that would be this guy right here. And it's a biped walking robot. And here's the box art backward there. A biped walking robot that also talks, has computerized lights, moves its arms, all kinds of stuff like that. And that was uh, that started uh, in the summer of 2015. I started working on it and I was into build mode by winter of 2015 and wrapped up the build you know, in January and February of 2016. And let's see, the next one I did was the Alpha Rama. And that was, uh, oh, before I get too far, the, the funny shape on this, this is based off a, a website called Alphadrome. Here's a, a logo. And it's a, if you're not familiar, it's a website where sci-fi toy collectors, especially collectors of robots, like to go and talk and share. And the uh, logo for the website is kind of based on a, basically a robot shape like the capital letter A. And in the years gone by, I've done a lot of robots for the guys on the websites, kind of based on that, that walk and do stuff. But this was the first biped walking robot that was based on it. So then I took it one step further and I decided, well, I'd kind of do a combination of the uh, Alpha Rama's robot. You know which one I'm talking about. And, uh, and, and the website's logo. So this one's biped walking again also with moving arms and talks. It says it's by my, you know what, line and uh, the beer automatically goes up and it drinks the beer and the eyes light and all that good kind of stuff. And it's got functional gears that make the feet tip and work and everything. So that was the uh, second 3D printing robot project. And then BotStock 13 came along and I did a bunch of giveaway robots, and about 30 of them, these little hopping robots. And they were a swag for the guys that went to the BotStock. So they were 3D printed. The guts came from a, a dollar store. Of course, all of these robots, you can find uh, videos of them working on YouTube. I'll put links down below. Now, let's see, then I came to the Alpha Strider. And I did the Alpha Strider. There's this blue one, and there's a box behind it, and there's this white one. In two different versions. Basically, it's an old-school walking robot toy, in that it has, you know, the leg shuffle action with ratchet wheels in the legs and it has uh, spinning gears in the chest and the arms move, eyes light. But uh, I did it in two versions. One that's programmable. It can also the bend at the waist. And one that, um, well, let's see. Yeah, there you can see the control box. And one that's manually controllable. And all of the servos can be made to work off one one knob. So you could sit there and and turn the knob and make it walk and make the arms move and the gears change or you can push the button and uh, make it automatically do it in super stride mode and the idea when I was designing this was there's probably a lot of people that want to get into 3D printing but maybe they don't want to have to get into programming like these and like my bipeds were all programmed so they could go this route just using a simple servo controller which you can buy for a couple of dollars off eBay but then again, there'd be a lot of guys that are kind of into programming, but are just learning 3D printing, and they might want to do the project. So I put it out in both ways, and then a lot of these, I put the files up on Thingiverse. Then my next project was Mr. Servo, this red one here. 
and I also did him with some different arms. The toy was roughly based in my mind the body and the arms off the uh, uh, Mr. Mercury toy. Here we go, pan down here to the got your Mr. Mercury toy. Because the, the way the arms can move, the robot can bend and the robot can walk. And these walk and bend at the waist and they're programmable. Uh, and all these robots that are programmed, I'm using the Pololu Mini Maestro 6 in these because I don't usually need more than six channels to perform all the different functions. And let's see, then that takes us to the Commando Junior, which is based off the Robot Commando toy. And again, it's uh, fully programmable. It has a routine that it does. It drives on the wheels and uh, the arms move with lights in the ends of the claws and the top of the hat opens up and a large gun comes out and fires and the eyes light and then and it repeats the program. Then I did the Foki robot which is based off a, a, an actual vintage robot which was part of a game and they never in the game it did nothing but the eyes would light. If it was a question and answer game and if you got it right, then the eyes would light. So uh, this one, these actually walk. I did it in two versions. I did one where I added some details to make it a little bit more exciting. It's a pin walking mechanism, very uh, simple. Runs on a single uh, pen light battery. The uh, eyes light and it walks. And let's see, that would then take us to Nando. Nando, again, was based off a, a vintage robot. The original one is a pneumatic, pneumatically operated robot where you squeeze a rubber bulb in your hand and that expands a bellows inside the robot which makes the legs shuffle and the head turn. In this particular one, I actually made a couple of versions of it. I made a, a radio controlled version, which is here somewhere. This is the wired remote version. This was a static just display version, which is up on Thingiverse. And then here's the radio controlled version. And it has a battery backpack on its back since all the radio control and everything has to be all inside the little teeny robot. And let's see. Then there was one more vintage robot I wanted to do in 3D printing, and it's called the Mexican robot, which is this one here. And uh, it doesn't require any programming. It's the old school shuffle walk, you know, ratchet wheels in the feet and the arms move and the inside of the headlights and the switches up on top of the head. And the batteries go in the back behind the tank profile. Let's see, then I did a project for another guy, which is the Mrs. Radicon. And this is based off artwork off of 1958 popular electronics magazine where they had this robot standing next to a vintage Radicon robot and he decided it'd be cool if he could actually flush out the artwork into a working robot so he had one guy design the CAD files for the outside body parts and then I redesigned all the parts so that they could actually be servo controlled so the robot moves around turns at the waist arms move uh, makes electronic sounds, the eyes flash, and the top of the head uh, flashes whenever it's making its sounds. And uh, again, it's using the Pololu programmable chip inside there. Then I did one for a friend of mine, Friendship 7, which was a TV show robot, and I don't believe, I don't believe I have one out here. I did put it up on Thingiverse. It was just one for him. It was a robot from a TV show that he remembered as a kid. And let's see, what other... Oh, I also did a uh, 3D printed cookie cutter, which is up on Thingiverse. So you can make a little gingerbread men based off of the Alpha Drone robots. All this other stuff is... Stuff I just got for Christmas, which has not been put away. So, there you go. Those were the uh, 12 main 3D printed projects for 2016. And in most cases, they were made for members of the 
website alpha drone so when I do that I, I just do them at a wash to figure out what the parts are going to cost and you figure out what shipping is going to cost and then that's what they pay I just crank them out each one's different you know how many you make it seems like I made about 40 of those and these little wind-up guys that I gave away um, 28 or 30 something like that just gives you a rough idea it isn't it isn't designing just one of these and doing just one robot it's designing them and then doing a bunch of them <laughs> um, and you factor in that uh, each robot is going to have between 12 and 24 3d printed parts all the parts are designed in uh, Design Spark Mechanical, which is a free CAD program. And there's uh, plenty of walkthroughs of the hut you can find on YouTube. So there's probably no reason for me to uh, spend much time walking around showing you everything that's in here. And it just keeps getting fuller and fuller. There's Johnny Five. Your C3PO. And down at that end down there, I've got uh, all my robot pinball machines. So there you have it. From a uh, 3D printing robot standpoint, it's been a very busy year.